everyone, welcome to What You Reading, where librarians from around DeKalb County talk about our quarantine reads, or in this case, some books that we are definitely not reading during quarantine because we have unpopular opinions about them. Hi, my name is Fran, I'm from the North Lake Library. Hi, my name is Mia, and I am from the Decatur Library. Hi, my name is Angela, and I am from the County Line Yellowwood Library. And I'm Nicole, I'm from the Harrison Crossing Library. And this time we are talking about books that we have unpopular opinions about. These are books that we personally didn't super love, but they are books that are super popular among readers. Um, might even be popular with some of the other people on this panel. Um, so we're going to kind of debate them, talk a little bit about why they weren't for us personally. Um, you know, no shade toward any of these books if you love them. Um, they just weren't our cup of tea and talk about books that we like to recommend to people who are interested in those books instead of those books. So um, the book that uh, I chose to do this time is uh, one that was recently turned into a Netflix movie. So uh, you guys may have seen the Netflix movie, you may have read the book. Um, it is called All the Bright Places. Um, and it is a book about mental illness, but also romance. And that's where it kind of loses me, um, trying to find a cover of the book to show you guys. Um, this is the image that is the Netflix movie right there, All the Bright Places. Um, it is a book by Jennifer Niven. And it's about two teenagers uh, who are both going through some things. One of them is bipolar. One of them has recently lost a family member um, and they kind of find each other. Um, the issue that I have with it for me, uh, based on my own experience with um, depression and family members with mental illness is that it, it feels to me like it romanticizes mental illness. Like, it, there's something just so like attractive about someone who is manic sometimes and depressed sometimes and that's so romantic and I um I I didn't really connect with that aspect of it um have any of you read that one I have not read that one I was going to <laughs> uh, but I would still again I would still say like, no 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 I, I, out. I understand but I, I feel like that maybe what they're trying to do is have a per person reach out to that person that is going through the mental illness and everything like as a almost as a lifeline versus as it being but i get the netflix thing is probably really making it more of a romanticized drama than yeah. you know but, but the book you know since i haven't read it i, I don't have too much opinion on it so. <laughs> I mean, it is, it, to me, reading it, it is by and large a romance. Um, so it, in terms of books that I would recommend instead, um, I would recommend either Forgive Me Leonard Peacock by Matthew Quick or uh, Bang by Barry Liga. Those are both pretty heavy books. However, they deal with um, mental illness in a way that feels um, very respectful, really focuses on that. And it's ultimately um, two teens who are on a, a pretty rough path, um, but come out on the other side, learning about themselves. I think that the end is a little bit more hopeful. Those are also available in Overdrive, and I will put the links below. I will also put the links to All the Bright Places. Um, if you've watched the Netflix movie and you want to read the book, again, this is just our opinions. So, you know, take a take what you will from it. You know, I'm afraid to do mine because mine is um, pretty popular. In fact, um, I love yours. <laughs> all four copies are currently checked out on Overdrive with a wait. Um, and it's not even a new book. So, um, but, <laughs> and like I said, I'm not saying it's um, a bad book. I'm just saying it's one I really did not like. And it is, um, here we go, for Liars. I, I know, and um, essentially, and I just got in trouble before we started filming for giving away spoilers, so I will not. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. 
so I'm like limiting what I'm saying, but um, basically it's about a girl who has their family has, I think it's um, somewhere up north, like in the um, Maine, Maine, I think, yeah, the Maine area. Yeah, and they have a bunch of beach houses with the family with cousins, and they're all fighting and um, over what the grandfather's going to leave, and this girl, it's during the summer, and she's, um, you kind of get the sense that she's trying to remember something, and it's about her trying to remember, um, I just don't want to say anything, that's going to get the it's trying, it's trying for her to sort of remember, um, some gaps in her memory. Um, the reason why I really, really did not like this book was um one the ending i really hate it so i encourage you to read it um just for the ending you can be angry too <laughs> <laughs> unless you're not i was not <laughs> yeah, right on this. and then i really um did not like any character in this book like i just couldn't um i mean i, I love a flawed character don't get me wrong but this one i just couldn't um I couldn't relate or like any of the characters. I also think I just don't like books where the whole time you're not sure what's happening at the end, you're like, oh, that's what happened? And so <laughs> this was one of those books. Um, so before everyone says why they love it, um, the book that kind of liked this that I did like, um, which is actually also checked out right now, um, and both of them are only available on overdrive currently, but you never know, um, was The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. And that one is also about the main character trying to sort of remember something about the family. So this one I really liked. Um, I read that one a while ago. All right, Fran, Angela. <laughs> oh. I, like, I read this knowing absolutely nothing about it going in. The, uh, Lockhart is one of my favorites. I enjoyed it, but Disreputable History of Frankie Landau Banks is like everything to me. And also the boyfriend list. It's like a series with like a little frog on the front and it looks totally fluffy. It looks like it's not serious at all. It has one of the best depictions of anxiety disorder that I've ever read in a book. It's a four book series. I'll link to that if we have it on Overdrive. I know we have it um, uh, in our physical libraries. So um, while I like this, I like her other work more. Like I feel like Boyfriend List is incredibly underrated. Um, those are the books of hers I would steer people toward. I, this is the <laughs> only book I've ever read by her, but I enjoyed it. I, you know, I thought it was a good read, and I, I do think it's one of those that you you have to read it all the way through. You you know, um, to you know to grasp the entire, you know, entirety of the book. But and and maybe she could have did better with a couple of the characters, or maybe left one or two of them out. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I just I don't. There's so many other books you can hate, and this. This is not one of them. This is a good one. So, it's like keep bringing my, Angela's bringing the tea. I bring my tea out. Just, <laughs> I'm just saying. On this, just. So, which brings me to my book. Uh, which uh, I love. <laughs> and which everyone that I know loves this book. And I'm going to look like Mr. You know, bad poopoo head. Like, why do you not <laughs> Um, but it's 13 Reasons Why, and you know, and there's a series um, on, is it Netflix? I think it's Netflix, yeah. Netflix, okay. And so most people by now have probably seen the series. If you haven't read the book, I will encourage you, although I did not like it, I encourage you to read the book so you can kind of compare it to the series because there's a lot of the similarities, but there's a lot of things that changed for the series to kind of make sense. Um, without giving away spoilers of the book, if you haven't read it um, by now, I would say my number one reason for disliking this book is the, the selfishness of the main character, not the main character. There's one character that's telling the story of the book, the, that's narrating it. And then the main character who the, the book, the premise of the book is about, which essentially it's about this a young lady who has 
committed suicide and she's left 13 tapes, uh, cassette tapes in this day and age. And yeah, it's not the 1970s. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's in the 2000s. And she's left these cassette tapes for people to re to listen to. And for basically her reasons why. And that's the, the, the that's the plot, that's the, you know, the setup for it, for the book. Um, I don't know, it just seems so self-centered, so self-indulged and stuff like that. And it was recommended to me by a teenager who said, well, teenagers are self-centered. They're, they're self-obsessed, you know, get over it. And I'm like, but are all teenagers self-obsessed like this? It just seems so wrong. It just, I don't know. So it annoys me. Oh, I, my book. I like that book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you what my book is to recommend instead of that one. But, but then you guys can tell me why you like the book. So <laughs> my book to recommend, but instead of 13 Reasons Why, this one, it may sound, it may be a little bit more fluffier, but, and it's not as, it's not as dark, I guess, but it's called I Have Lost My Way, and it's by Gail Foreman. I love her. And it's essentially about three different uh, teens who are currently at crossroads in their life, and, and one of them wants to commit suicide. So you, each teen is struggling with their own kind of identity and everything but they then they come together as as friends and they you know this they kind of mingle and stuff like that and so it takes on a, a whole different you know thing and the, the ending to me is it's quite as much of an ending as it is it, the ending is better but it's it's a nicer book to read but i would recommend this one over 13 reasons now torture me with your likes about this book that I dislike. <laughs> go ahead, Fran. You go first, Mia. Are you sure? I'll hop in. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I laughed because I know one of the reasons that you didn't like it too was the cassette factor, which I loved being, um, I'm gonna sort of give away my age, but being someone that grew up with a Walkman and listening to cassettes <laughs> this morning, <laughs> it brought back so much fun memories. Like, I love that aspect, and I love that it was something that wasn't like online that anyone can see like you didn't have to worry about that factor it was just contained on these cassettes you had to have and then I kind of liked the end I felt like the character um learned from the whole experience and grew and so um the suicide at least you know at the end had a like her life still meant something so I kind of liked that aspect of it and I liked that Although there were some really horrible characters in that book, there were also um, some really great characters in that book. So I kind of like, and I felt like it's one that you could talk about, like, you know, how much, you know, because one of the people in the tape is like, I believe like the counselor, it's like how much effect, you know, do people have? So I just, yeah, I don't know. And I don't usually like contemporary fiction, but I'm like, I'll go get to the cassette, it's not contemporary. Okay, <laughs> 1974 cassettes you try to pull off of me. And then you, you know, you got to have a cassette player, you got to pack batteries for this, and then you got to ship it to all of Yeah, but you don't need Wi Fi. You can it's listen to it on Wi Fi. <laughs> it's a lot. And I think, in terms of realism, no. Like, is someone who is so like depressed and despondent are they going to be able to go through these steps, even if they feel the way that they do about these people and make these tapes and send them off? It's just, I, I doubt it, you know? It's like I read it and it was sort of like, I mean, I don't think this would happen. At the same time, um, I think if there is one really good thing about it is that teens reading it, as Mia said, may kind of come away and go, oh, these are actions that maybe I've done to someone and I didn't think about how they would feel about it. Some of the things feel a little like um, more serious than others, but it's never a bad idea to try to be empathetic. Put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Like think about 
the fact that your actions have consequences and affect people. Um, so yeah, not realistic at all. Um, I think even at the time when it was published, I think it's about 10, 15 years old. I don't remember when it was published. Cassettes didn't seem like yeah, you know, the go-to thing. Like, um, but I, I can, I can see why it might speak to some teens. Mm -hmm. yes. Having watched the Netflix series, but never read the book, I have to say like that act, your actions have consequences thing for me. Um, cause I watched it as an adult. Um, it, it really does resonate with everyone who I know who's read the book or, or watched the series. All right. That said, like, that's, that's a very valid criticism, Angela. <laughs> like, I am no, for real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I think I will end this with my book. And I apologize in advance, Fran, because this was a Georgia Peach Award nominee last year. Last year, it yeah. It did not win, though. So don't be mad. <laughs> but it's called In Other Lands by Sarah Rees Brennan. Okay, it's this one with the mermaids on the front. I remember that cover. Yeah, if you've ever seen that cover. The audiobook is available right now on Overdrive, but I'm going to tell you right now, don't check it out. <laughs> don't do it. I have never in my life given a, uh, uh, you know, like rating on Libby. I gave a thumbs down for this book. Like, <laughs> only, only rating I've ever given. And it's, it's about a teenage boy named Elliot who one day gets transported to this fantasy world um, that's like a school for warriors and diplomatic advisors. Okay, it's so, like, it, it should be so good. It has, like, LGBTQIA. It's character-driven. Like, it's magic. It's fantasy. No. This book drops you in the middle of what's going on. You have no idea who any of these characters are. The audiobook just like starts with him at school being transported to this other place and just mm. <sighs> so I had no idea what was going on. It was way, way, way too character driven with way little explanation of anything. I gave this book an hour of my time and that was too much. And <laughs> just I, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't do it. And I'm so sorry. And if anyone wants to read this and prove me wrong, please prove me wrong. But just tell me, don't make me read it. <laughs> I just, I'm not going to. Um, but on that note, before you guys, before you guys, you know, rebuttal me, um, the book that I would recommend in place of this one is a fantasy series that came out, I think a year before this one. This one was in 2017. Um, the other one, uh, it was 2016, and it's called Three Dark Crowns by uh, Kendra Blake. Have you guys read this series? No, but I love stuff with crowns. Yes. Okay. There's so this... so many books of crowns now. You must be so happy, Mia. Yeah. So happy. Yeah. This book series is so good, and I've never read anything like it before, and I am not, like, a fantasy person, and I just, I read them back to back to back to back to back. Um, but it's about three sisters who at the age of 16 have to fight each other for the crown using magic and other things. And I won't give anything else away. Are um, they but triplets? yeah. Wait, what? The, the girls, are they triplets? Yes. Yeah, okay. I think I read the first book mm -hmm. in that series. It's good. It's really good. <laughs> but yeah, so that was mine. If you guys have a rebuttal for In Other Lands, I'd love to I hear it. Not, I did not read that one. Okay. I do. Do you right, have one, right, Mia? Right. Do you have one, Mia? Um, no, but I was going to say, I, um, that's one of the things that I didn't like about um, We Were Liars. I don't like when I have no idea what's going on and there's lots of characters. <laughs> I feel like that's, if, that, if it was like that, I probably would agree with you. Yeah. I, um, for In Other Lands, I would say that it is, um, we, I was on the Peach Committee that put that book on. Um, 
I was not one of the people who read it. About half the committee read each of the books. I will say that it's like very hit or miss for people. I completely understand why it wouldn't mean anything. Like people would be like, whatever, like just go read The Magicians, go read Narnia, like go read something else that's similar to this. I think that for the people who really, really loved it, um, it was having those, uh, those queer characters. They really liked the fact that it was character driven and that it was a like fantasy with queerness that didn't feel like that's all that it was. Mm -hmm. um, so it may not be for, it, it's really one of those that we put on the list and we're like, this is not gonna appeal to everybody. Like a lot of people are gonna pick this up and be like, no. And not, you know, just because it is very like, the world building is not completely fleshed out. I would say it really is more character driven. And if you're a person who's like, but I want to understand how this works. Why is this here? Why is this happening? This is not the book for you. Um, Thank but you. don't want to read if you've like read enough of The Magicians or Narnia or Harry Potter or whatever. And you're like, okay, I kind of get how this world works. So just give me some characters that I might like that this might be a book that you would enjoy. That is perfect. You nailed it on the head. That is exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you. So um, we are going to have links to all of the books that we recommend and don't recommend underneath. Um, maybe some of our don't read these discussions made you think, actually, that book sounds really good to me for exactly the reasons that she didn't like it. Um, so again, these are just our personal opinions. These are unpopular opinions because a lot of people love these books. Um, so check them out. Check out our other recommendations. And we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>